We will be studying the book of Psalm 133, verses 1 3. So if you have your Bibles with you, may I invite you to open your Bibles. Uh, Psalm 133, verses 1. To three. Okay? So, dyan po natin sisimula ng ating pong mensahe. Now, the title of the message is Ignite to Unite. Sana po sa ating pong pag-aaral ngayon ay magkakaroon po ng spark na tayong lahat bilang pamilya ay magkakaroon ng unity. And so, sabi po niya dyan, united we stand, divided we fall. Sino pong gumagamit ng moto na yan sa inyo o nagamit na? Wala pong gumamit, ako lang. Ayun, meron po. Yung united we stand, divided we fall was put on the seal ng Commonwealth ng Kentucky. Pre-war po yan para magkaroon po ng unity sa kanilang estado. And it is very important also when it comes to the church. Kadalasan po kasi united we stand, divided you fall. <laughs> united tayo, pero pag Nagkaroon na ng problema, kanya-kanya na tayo. Sana hindi po ganun. Okay? Tinan niyo po yan. Pag individualistic po tayo, that happens. But if we come together, we become strong. Unity matters in the church. And in our study, Jesus Christ wants unity among His people. If unity matters, there's an element of relationship. Ang hirap magkaroon ng unity pag wala tayong relasyon sa isa't isa. And if we claim we are brothers and sisters in Christ, then there is something that ties us together and that is relationship. And the key to growth, the key to success, the key for blessings, God said, is unity. Tinan niyo po yung Bibles niyo, ano pong sabi dyan? How, what? Pakibasa po. How, ano po? How good and? Okay, continue. It is to? Wow. How good and pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. By the way, I'm using the NASB. You, when we go to the New Testament, yan din pong sinasabi ni Kristo. ang kingdom na divided walang mangyayari. It will not stand. And when it comes to relationship, one thing that divides relationship are conflicts. May issue ko kay ganito, so hindi ko na siya papansinin. Galit ako kay ganito, so hindi ko na siya papansinin. But we attend one church. Sa Bible po, ang progress po at ang growth ng isang iglesia divided, stagnant. Now, there are a lot of things that happen. Some leave the church for valid reasons. Some leave the church because of conflicts. 
Some leave the church because they are caught in the crossfire. Nag-aaway itong dalawa. Nasa gitna yung isa. Nadadamay. Alis na lang ako. Hindi ko makasundo ito. Alis na lang ako. And sometimes, alam nyo po, yung pastor, hirap. Because it's plain and simple given in the Bible, ayaw lang natin sumunod. Tapos pag hindi hinabol ng pastor, lalo pa magtatampo. Punta ka, hindi naman ako, hindi naman ako importante dyan, hindi naman ako hinabol ng pastor eh. Pag ganun po ang mangyayari sa, ing- sa iglesia, magiging stagnant po. Bakit? Kasi yung pastor nakafocus lang sa paghahabol ng mga members na gustong ibalik. Ngayon ho, hindi na ho ganun ang konsepto, mga kapatid. Ang konsepto ho ngayon, what's important are what remains. And that's where unity needs to start. Those who remain. Si Pastor Saul po, kasama ko po sa PBTS. We were together for four years, three years. Pero ngayon ko lang po nakita, na-experience yung kanyang pagiging strict. Noon po kasi, ano kami, uh, yung yung biruan po namin out of this out of this world and you don't need to know it what what happens in PBTS stays in PBTS but the thing is i have come to know him in the sense that god is working in his life in this church kayo alam niyo yung background ninyo ng church ako konti lang po but i admire those who are faithful not to the pastor but faithful to the Lord. And you are still here persevering. And that is what we are trying to ignite right now. There are a lot of changes. Some will not agree. Some would agree. But how do we reconcile it? We look through God's Word. And so with this, unity matters in every body of Christ, not just here at all, Jen. Ako po, meron po akong heart na pag... I work with the young people. Meron akong heart na pag yung nagtampo sa akin, nahabulin ko. My wife knows that. Hahabulin ko. But there's such a thing as tough love na sinasabi. Because sometimes, my focus on getting people back, nawawala yung focus ko dun sa mga tao na naiiwan. And I admire your pastor because he is now looking after those who are remaining here. And I hope and pray that those who are remaining right now would see why you are here. And so with that, let's start. Verse 1, sabi po niya, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers to dwell together in unity. Unity is well-pleasing. So, yung concept po ng good dito, at saka yung how, i-define natin. Yung good ho dito, ang idea po niyan is proper. Hindi ho yung, you look good, you have good grades. Hindi ho ganun, general ho yun. Ang idea po sa Bible, ibig sabihin, proper. Yung good na ginamit po sa Bible is proper. So, pag sinabi natin, Dun sa behold how good, ang ibig po sabi niyan, behold how proper it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Proper. It is also used as how fitting it is. And last, 
yung sabi dyan, ito po yung mabigat na idea niyan. How right it is for God's people to be one. God challenges us to do righteous things. Tama? Tama po ba? Ito po isa pong tamang kailangan gawin ng iglesia. It is right for God's people to dwell together in unity. Mamaya po, mas maintindihan po natin yan. The word pleasant is used as attractive or delight. Ano ba ibig sabihin yan? How attractive it is when God's people dwell as one. Lahat tayo may hinahangaan, di ho ba? O, nung nakaraang K-pop concert dito, mayroong mga humanga. May mga nagpa-picture kay Han Suji, yung kumanta ng... OST ng Goblin. Humanga. How attractive it is when God's people dwell as one. Pag united po ang isang iglesia, ang katawan, it is appealing and attractive. Hindi lang sa kapwa manan palataya, kung hindi sa di manan ng palataya. Yan mo yung sinasabi ng attractive. Charming. How charming it is that these people all get along. Kaaya-aya. When you say delight, it's something that you experience. Tama? Gusto nyo. So, pag merong unity ang church, nakikita na gusto yan ng tao. At higit sa lahat, gusto yan ng Diyos. Yan ho ang definition ng good and pleasant. Hindi niya ho pinaghiwalay yan eh. Hindi niya ho pinaghiwalay. Iisa. Good and pleasant. Hindi niya sinabing good or. Good and pleasant. Magkasama. Pag pinaghiwalay mo yan, wala nang, hindi na unity yan. Kasi yan ang definition ng salita ng Panginoon when it comes to unity. So it is well-pleasing. A church that is united is well-pleasing in God's eyes and in our community and in our neighboring churches. Point number two. Unity is the church's perfume. Sino sa atin ang nagpapabango? <laughs> Ako, pastor. Iba yung pawis ko. Mas mabango sa pabango. Mapalad ka pag yung pawis mo mas mabango sa pabango. Iba? Pag nakakaamoy ho ba tayo ng mabango, anong feeling? Ano po? Pag nakamoy ka, hmm, bawal naman ito. Ganun bang sabi mo? O pag nakamoy, hmm, bango. Ang sarap ulit-ulitin. Di ba? Ganun pag may pagpabango. Of course, syempre, pag buntis ka, syempre, yung hormones mo, nagkaagulo eh. Hmm, hindi kaya ko yung pabango mo. Bantot. Pero, when we are in, an, in, in, in our normal system, when you smell something that is really pleasant, ang bango. Ang iglesia po na united, mabango. Aamoy-amoyin kayo. Ang bango dyan sa old gen. Ano kaya ang pabango nila? Di ba ganun din tayo? Ang bango niya na, anong pabango mo tol? Yan. Ang church, 
pag united, mabango sa Diyos, maging sa tao at sa kapwa mananampalataya. Paano ang sinasabi dyan, Pastor? O, tinan natin, sabi dun sa una, di ba? How good and pleasant it is for brethren to come together or dwell together in unity. It is. Ito ay tulad ng, oh, it's a precious oil upon the head coming down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard coming down upon the edge of his robes. By the way, Aaron is the high priest nung panahon nila. Okay? So, ano ang makikita natin dyan? Yung oil, nagsisimbolize po dyan ng preciousness. When you go to Exodus, sabi po sa Exodus 30.23, dinidefine po yung oil dyan as a mix of fine spices na kung saan it creates now a perfume that is only being used to anoint a high priest. And that high priest happens to be Aaron. So, hindi siya basta-basta lang na oil. Okay? Mabango siya. It is a concoction of different spices. Expensive. When you read Exodus, it's expensive. So, hindi rin sa cheap. At pinagsama-sama yan, yan yung ginamit ni Moses to anoint Aaron. Now, when you use the word anoint in the Bible, it, is, it has something to do with segregation. It is something to do with separation. It has something to do with holiness. So, pag, pag anoint ka ng oil, ibig sabihin, you are now set aside for the ministry that only belongs to God. Yun ho ang idea ng anointing ng oil. At hindi lang din ho, basta-basta ang oil yan. Yun ho, eh, mahal. So, the concept of oil now is a sacred consecration of the high priest Aaron. Sacred banal. When you say consecration, is set apart. Sanctify. Itatabi. Maniniwala po ba kayo na tayo ay set apart? Agree, disagree. Yun dito lang ang nag-agree. Hindi dito po sa gitna. We all need to agree with that. Bakit ho? Set apart ho talaga ang anak ng mga pang-anak, ang anak ng Panginoon. Ano ba? Ang, ang description ho sa atin before we receive the Lord, we are darkness. For once you were darkness, now you are light. So, light and darkness cannot come together. It should be segregated, separated. A sinner cannot be a saint. A sinner and a saint are separated because of the Lord Jesus Christ. A sinner does not have Christ. A saint has Christ. So when we are, when we became God's children, we were now separated. So ibig sabihin, is net apart tayo. For what purpose? Righteousness and holiness. Kaya ho, minsan nahihirapan ho tayo sa paghahanap kung ano ba ang purpose ko sa buhay eh. Kung ano ba ako sa kay Yesu Kristo. Kanina inaway po natin, I know who I am. Do we really know who we are? Kasi pag alam ho natin yun, we act what we know we are. And if we say we are God's child, we are separated from this world. Even you are still part of the world. 
Nasa Bible din ho yan, di ho ba? Nasaan ho ba ang citizenship ng anak ng Panginoon? Dito ho ba? Dito ho ba? Hindi. Nasa presensya ho ng Panginoon ang citizenship natin. So magkaiba ho tayo sa guma- ginagalawan ng mundo. So when we were God's when we were called by God, we are now segregated and consecrated. Kaya nga mayroon pong tinatawag na sanctification eh, may process. And so that is what we see here. Yun yung ginawa ni Moses kay Aaron. So that he would know what is his function being the high priest. Another, the oil, it's fragrant. It's fragrance. Mabango ho talaga yan. Nung panahon ho na, panahon namin, nung panahon ko ho, meron hong, hindi ko kasi kayang bilin yung mga perfume na binibili ho ng inyo pong senior pastor eh. Medyo, hindi, <laughs> cannot carry ho yun. So, yung time po namin, meron po yung affordable sa amin. Alam niyo ba yung, hindi po bench eh. Kayo po yun eh. Hindi rin drakar. Sobrang ano yun. Yung, yung oil, <laughs> meron pong, meron pong perfume noon na ang composition is made of oil pero mabango. Wax oil? Po? Hindi ko na po alam. Pero meron po yun na ito po kasi naging concept. Ang oil po hindi po agad-agad natutuyo, di ba? As compared to yung mist ng perfume. So kung sasabihin po na, kung i-compare po natin yung inabutan ko, actually meron pa po ata nun eh. Mas matagal po yung joban. Mas matagal po yung lasting nung amoy nung oil kasi it stays sa katawan. So ganun po ang illustration na pag ang isang iglesia ay united, ganun ho tayo kabango. At tatagal ho, yun po ibig sabihin niyan. Long lasting ika nga. Okay. Pangalawa, it is also symbolic. Yun po yung sabi ko kanina. Symbolic siya na isi-separate siya dahil meron siyang calling na ito ang gagawin mo ayon sa panawagan ni Yesu Kristo o ng panawagan ng Diyos. And for Aaron's function, he is the one who goes to the temple, offers sacrifices on behalf of the sins of the people. Siya lang hong gumagawa nun. Kasi hindi yung basta-basta nun na pwede ka pumasok sa holies of holies dahil mamamatay ka nga. So siya, yun ang naiatas sa kanyang trabaho. And with the oil, it is symbolic now of his anointing that that is his function. So yan po yung ibig sabihin niya. But when we come to look at it, anong connection yan, pastor, sa good and pleasant Unity. Actually, yung connection po niyan, hindi dyan sa oil. Ang connection po ng unity dyan, when you come to look at the illustration, sabi niya, nilagay sa forehead, sa head, di ba? Tinan niyo po yung Bibles niyo. Tapos, ano nangyari? It ran down to where? Sa... Bigote na lang para hindi ako magkamali. Okay. Bigote ba dito? Balbas. Okay yan. Para hindi ako magkamali. Okay. Pagkatapos saan tumulay? Sa robe. Hanggang saan? Dun sa, he- dun sa edge ng robe. Usually po, ang, nakaka- ang nakikita po nating illustration when there is an anointing, it's just a small or minimal amount lang, di ba? Eh, dito parang binuhusan si Aaron eh. I baptize you in the name of the Father. Binuhus mo gano'n yung santimba ng tubig. Kung titinan natin illustration, ganito ho yan. 
ang isa kong iglesia na united, ang pagdaloy po ng pagpapala ng Diyos ay magtutuloy-tuloy. So, if the church is united, the anointing of God sa church will now overflow. Excess! Hindi lang ako lang. Kung hindi excess, pati yung mga katabi ko, maamoy ako, pati yung mga katabi ko, mahawaan ako. Ganun po ang unity na sinasabi dyan. Subukan yung hindi pansinin niyang katabi niyo ngayon ng dalawang buwan. Tingnan ko kung tatabi pa sa inyo. <laughs> hindi mo ba? Subukan natin. Yung katabi niyo, huwag niyong pansinin ng dalawang buwan. Alis yan. Lilipat ng ibang lugar. Pero yung katabi niyo, pag maya't maya, you give them warmth, you look at them, you welcome them, you love them, eh baka kahit umuwi ka ng bahay, susundan ka niyan. But what is the concept? People in the church will smell you as a fragrant perfume. Yun lang ho ang concept niyan. At hindi lang sa loob na iglesia, pati pag lumabas tayo. Now, do we deserve this kind of unity? No. Bakit? Kasi nga, we are sinners. But can you imagine God's grace giving us this in excess? Enjoy my unity. Just as we in the Godhead is one. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Can you imagine these three fighting? Na-imagine nyo ba nag-away yung tatlong yan? Hindi ho. God authored unity and He wants unity amongst His sons and daughters. Kaya hindi ho niya ipinagdamot yan. Overflowing, excessive yan. Even if we do not deserve to be united, He gave that in excess because we are separated from the world and we are God's children. Yan ho yung concept niyan. Hindi lang ho, wag, hindi lang ho dun sa oil na ipinay dito, hindi ho. Yung excess. Ilang beses sinabi yung run down, run down, run down, run down. Which leads us to the third point. Anong sabi niya dun sa last? It is also like dew of Hermon coming down from mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing life forever. How it is again connected. Now, let's look at this. Ito po ang Mount Hermon. Okay? Iko-correct po ko ni Pastor Ding sa ni Pastor Saul kasi galing sila dito sa Holy Land. Now, Mount Hermon, ang distance niya to Mount Zion over here is 443 kilometers. Kung ilalarawan po natin yan, that is from Baguio all the way here to Cavite. Yan o, tinan niyo po yung distansya. Baguio all the way to Cavite. Tinan niyo po. Ang sabi niya kanina, ang unity is good and pleasant and it is described as a do. Do? Do. Ano ba? Do? Do. Do. Okay. Do. Na nanggagaling sa Mount Hermon, pababa, papuntang Mount Zion. Ano ibig sabihin nun, Pastor, yung do? Ayan ho, malabo ho ang itsura ng Mount Hermon. Pero eto po, two, two-thirds of the year, frosted po ang tip ng Mount Hermon. At darating po yung araw na lahat po yan magpre-precipitate, babagsak po yan as water. Okay? Babagsak ho as water. Pero ang description niya sa Bible, ang bagsak niya, Mount Zion, eh 443 kilometers. 
So, ibig sabihin, yung, yung hamog sa Baguio City, pag yun naging tubig, kailangan umabot hanggang dito sa Old Gen. <laughs> Pastor, imposible ho ata eh. Baka pagbaba lang ho sa Rosario, tuyo na ho yung tubig. And you know what? Mga kapatid, yan ho ang pagpapala na sinasabi na inillustrate ng Panginoon na kahit gano kalayo ang isang iglesyang united makikilala at maaamoy. Gusto niyo bang maamoy din kayo sa Baguio? Amen! Sa Bicol ho ba niya naamoy niyo sila? <laughs> o, konti pa daw, maamoy na tayo doon. Ganun ang illustration niyan. When people are united in the church, people will come to know you even in far places. And this is all done by whom? God. And it brings life. When you go down, pag titinan nyo po yung track na yan, meron po ditong mga slopes, meron pong vegetation dito eh. So the do coming from Mount Hermon now, as it goes down, yung mga dry na lupa, gagawin niya pong pleasant and good for vegetation. And it refreshes. Don't, you, don't we want all gen to bring forth life to others because we are united? And it also brings forth life to our brothers and sisters who are also having challenges. Unity brings forth life. Yan pong sinasabi. Can you imagine yung nalantang halaman pag nalagyan ng diniligan mo, inayos mo, mabubuhay muli. Ganyan ho ang idudulot ng isang iglesyang nagkakaisa. God's blessings will overflow sa atin. I hope we see that and I hope we truly understand that. Now, to picture all of this concept para maiayos po natin lahat yan, ito po ang isang model ng unity. According to Paul, this is found in Philippians chapter 2, verse 1 to 2. Therefore, if there is any encouragement in Christ, if there is any consolation of love, if there is any fellowship of the Holy Spirit, if any affection and compassion, make my joy complete by... Anong sabi? Being of the same mind. He's talking to the church, ha? Huh? Maintaining the same love. United in spirit. Intent on one purpose. What does the verse imply? In simple understanding. Ano pong sinasabi? Meron ho bang bahid ng disunity dyan? Wala ho. Meron ho dito unity. And it gives Paul, complete joy that he finds the church united. And if we want to also experience complete joy, then we should also be united. Plain and simple. Tinan po nyo. Same mind. Same thinking. Mental unity. Same love, emotional unity. 
Pag sinabi ng Panginoon, love your enemies, dapat lahat tayo, love your enemies. Hey, teka, teka, pastor, bawal, di pwede. Eh, paano to? Etong pinapagawa ng Panginoon, eto ang nakita. Ay, hindi, 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 pastor, may mas maganda dyan, may mas bago akong alam. Same thinking. Same spirit. Their spiritual unity. Same purpose. There's directional unity. Last two Sundays ago, challenge tayo ni Pastor Saul about what? Vision. Kung anong tatahakin ng all generations. When we are united, we would all pursue that same purpose. I would like to end here. Si Paul pa din po. In Ephesians, the whole book of Ephesians, chinachallenge din ni Pablo ang unity ng church. At ito ho, dinescribe niya. Ephesians chapter 2, there should be ethnic unity. Walang kapampangan, walang ilukano, walang Tagalog, walang Bikulano, lahat pantay-pantay sa harap ng Diyos. Di ba sabi niya, dapat walang hudyo at walang hentil. Pero sometimes kasi sa atin, meron pa din yan eh. Kailangan iset aside na ho natin yan for us to be united. Next, relational. When you go to Ephesians 4, 2 to 3, it does about relational unity. Mahal niyo ba yung katabi niyo? Ah, medyo yung gusto. Punti. Tayo ho ba nagmamahal? O may pinipili ho tayo? Spiritual unity. Ephesians, Ephesians 4, 1 to 6. We have one spirit. Doctrinal unity. Ephesians 4, 4 to 6. Ito kailangan ho din natin maintindihan ho ito. Nabasa ko ho yung uh, meron ho kayong statement of faith. Dapat ho nag-agree ho lahat tayo doon. Kasi pag hindi ho, meron nung disunity dyan. Ano, ano ho ang halimbawa niyan? Halimbawa ho, ang banal na spirito ay hindi Diyos. Yan. Pero ang statement of faith ng church eh, the Holy Spirit is also God. That's one example of doctrinal unity. Do you believe in the Godhead? God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Kung hindi, may problema ho tayo dyan. Kasi doctrine ho yan eh. Foundation ho yan. Do you believe that we are a church? Do we believe that we are the body of Christ? Alam niyo bakit importante yan? Kasi foundation ho natin yan. That's why we are always in, we are always encouraging you to do life group. Kasi doon ho na ituturo ho yan. Who is God? Who is Jesus Christ? Who is the Holy Spirit? What is the church? Those are all doctrines. Kailangan no, united ho tayo dyan. Pastoral. Ito medyo may mabigat po ito. Ephesians 4, 11, 13. Sasabihin ko po ito ng may kalinawanan. 
And this does not promote the pastors. Or this does not say that the pastors are always right. It does not. So, inuuna ko na po yun. When we say pastoral unity, lahat ho tayo naniniwala sa harap ng Panginoon, sa kanyang iglesia, pantay-pantay. Tama? Tama. Okay. Pero, sa iglesia ng Panginoon, merong tinatawag siyang pastor. Tama? Tama. So, ano ngayon ang agreement? Ano ngayon ang unity? Ito ho ang unity. Kadalasan nangyayari, eh, inaalaw natin bilang congregation ang pastor na magbigay ng mensahe. Tama? Pero, <laughs> hindi ho natin inaalaw ang pastor magdesisyon pagdating sa ministry o gawain ng iglesia. Yan ho ay mali. Ang pastor ho, hindi lang ho nagbibigay ng mensahe. Katwang ho ang pastor sa ministry na magaganap sa iglesia. Pero kultura natin minsan yan, di ba? Ay, hindi, pastor. Tagal na namin dito. Bago ka lang eh. Mas maganda ito. At ito nang gagawin natin. Wala hong unity pag ganun. Let me tell you again something. Meron pong mga pastor na abusive. Naniniwala ako dyan. When you say abusive, they micromanage everything. Correct? And ayaw din naman natin yan. Even the congregation does not like that. Correct? Pag meron po kayong mga questions, hilain niyo po ako mamaya pag natapos service, tanuin niyo po ako. Pero eto, explain ko lang. Of course, we do not want those kinds of pastors. At biblically, ayaw din ng Diyos yun. Di ba? Sabi din ni Pablo, hindi tayo ganun na nilo-lord over natin ang mga anak o mga anak ng Diyos. But there are pastors who are like that. Now, this is what I would want you to understand right now. There are also pastors who are faithful in their calling and do and does their job faithfully for the growth of God's church. Meron din hong tapat na pastor na ang iniisip din ho niya ay kapakanan ninyo nang naayon sa kanyang relasyon at panawagan sa Diyos. Diyan ho iiral ang tinatawag na humility. Because humility is submission. Meron hong ganong pastor. And I'm not raising Pastor Saul because he is a good brother at meron kaming pinagdaanan sa seminary. But this I tell you, his heart is for this church. At ito din ho ang may contribute namin. We are five sa pastorate. At alam din ho ni Pastor Saul yan. We also correct one another. At kung meron man hindi tama sa amin, inaayos namin. I hope you see that. Sometimes, we look at change as negative because it removes us from our convenience and comfort zone. But it does not prove also that change, God can use change. 
So that's where we need to trust one another. That's where we need to be united. That's the pastoral. Dapat may unity po tayo dyan. Can you imagine half of you not submitting to the senior pastor? But if we happen to submit each one of us, hindi ko alam kung anong great ang gagawin ng Panginoon sa all generation. Hindi lang ho dito, outside and elsewhere. missional unity saan ho yan vision kung ang tinataha ko ng old generation is to transform worship and multiply yan ho ang mission natin we need to be united in that Now, everything else now has been laid. Binigay na ng Panginoon lahat. It's all written in His Word. Hindi ho nang galing sa akin yan. Hindi ho nang galing kay Pastor Saul yan. Nang galing ho sa salita niya yan. You can study. You can review kung lahat ng sinabi ko ay galing sa salita. And I can attest, galing lahat sa kanya yan. Tinan niyo ito. This is now the challenge for all generation. Binigay ng Panginoon. Now God leaves the decision sa atin. I encourage each one. If we decide to be united, if we decide to be united and set aside our differences, but focus on what God is telling all generations, we would be like the oil that has been poured to Abraham. We would be like the dew who brings forth life. And this is what's going to happen. We would grow larger through evangelism. Lalago yan. Papalagoy ng Panginoon yan if we are united. We would be brother through ministry. Lalago din tayo sa ministry. Lalawak ang ministry ng all gen. We would be stronger in worship. We would be warmer through fellowship. And lastly, deeper through maturity. Meron ho bang familiar sa nakapost? Tinan ho ninyo. Ito po yung 5 M's ng church. This is the paradigm of this church. Evangelism, which you can say missions, maturity, ministry, worship, fellowship, membership. Our prayer as pastors, let's unite The hurts that we had makes us stronger. Let's put them aside. Let's start afresh. Because if we would continue to be disunited, we would just be in the maintaining mode. Mine maintain lang po natin ang iglesia. Ang hirap lumago. Hindi nakakita ng progress because we are disunited. This is our prayer. I stand here and speak, but I believe Pastor Benji, Pastor Denmark, Pastor Ding, 
and pastors all wants unity amongst us all. Let's ignite to unite. Let this be a start, a spark for all of us to unite for one purpose, one love, one mind, one heart, one body of Christ as we do His calling in each and every one of us. Let's pray. Lord, gusto po naming ma-experience yung inilalarawan nyo sa inyong salita. Nasa pamamagitan ng pagkakaisa ay dadaloy ang inyong pagpapala. Panginoon, naniniwala po ako ng bawat isa po sa amin ay hinahangad ito. Itong pagkakaisang ito. Empower us, O oh God. Empower us to set aside our differences. To set aside our conflicts. And to unite for your name's sake, for your glory alone, for the furtherance of your gospel and your kingdom as we proclaim you king of our lives. Lord, how good and pleasant it is when we dwell together in unity. I pray that as we in our lives, Lord, unite with one another, may you bless us. Bless this church. At naniniwala po kami, Panginoon, na ang pagpapala mo sa isang nagkakaisang katawan ay hindi lang nananatili sa inyong iglesia, kung hindi sa aming pamilya, sa aming pinagtratrabahuhan, sa aming komunidad, magiging mabango kami. Magiging tama kami. Magiging kaaya-aya kami. Lord, help us, dear God. Alisin niyo po sa amin ang critical spirit. Alisin niyo po sa amin, Panginoon. Palitan niyo po ito ng pagpapakumbaba. Palitan niyo po ito ng healing. Palitan niyo po ito, Panginoon, ng pagmamahal. Just as we are one in spirit. We pray also, Lord, that as you convict us this morning, that we would not suppress the power of the Holy Spirit to work in our lives, but give all. Submit everything. For we know, O Lord, that in obedience, in submission, there is growth, there is joy, there is life, and there is love. 
I leave to you all, Jen, O Lord. This is not ours, this is yours. Unite us. Having the same mind, having the same love. Jesus. Mm-hmm.